Welcome one and all inside the Globe Studios. My name is Dante Stan. This is the Goshen News Weekend Wrap-Up presented by Globe TV. As always, all stories reported during this newscast were originally written by the Goshen News and reformatted for this show. It's a big week for the local community, so this episode will deal exclusively with the city of Goshen. We'll start with a special visit from Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb, who made a stop Wednesday at the historic Goshen Theater, which for the first time ever hosted a quarterly meeting of the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, or the IEDC. Every quarter, a public space is chosen in a different city and designated as an open meeting session, meaning that members of the public are encouraged to attend. Governor Holcomb is the chair for the IEDC and led discussions about the growing economic opportunities throughout Indiana. The primary update provided by Governor Holcomb and the IEDC board was on new details regarding the Regional Economic Acceleration and Development Initiative, aka Ready 2.0. During the session, a new timeline of development for the program was announced, on top of remarking that Goshen was one of the most highly attended public sessions that Governor Holcomb had seen during his term, it was also announced that the state of Indiana has been named as one of the top regions in the country in the development of microelectronics. When you, when you talk about microelectronics or hypersonics, these areas that we're leaning into, uh, semiconductors, EV, uh, the whole kind of transition in the future of mobility, you have to be able to operate you have to be able to at a speed of business and be nimble. And what Indiana has proven in the Midwest is we pop up the map. If you'd like to learn more about the visit and how the Goshen community showed up and showed out, you can check out a full-length feature on our YouTube page, at 91.1 The Globe, and our website, globeradio.org. Well, while Wednesday was a big day at the Goshen Theater, things didn't slow down at all on Thursday as the space was host to a public candidate forum hosted by the Goshen News and the Elkhart County League of Women Voters. Both political sides were represented through mayoral and city council candidates, with the two sides covering a wide range of topics. Discussions ranged from traffic to education, crime and mental health, but particularly housing. The Goshen News reports that for the most part, candidates from both sides agreed that housing was a major priority, just in different ways. Both candidates representing District 3 agreed that their district suffers from the highest amount of blighting within city limits, with one candidate even estimating that around 200 properties within the District 3 are unusable. Now, similar to the governor's session, this forum was open to the public and community members were provided with the opportunity to ask questions. To view the entire two-hour forum, you can find the link at Goshen News' website, GoshenNews.com. The Goshen City Council met Monday night and met without much deliberation. The council unanimously passed the city's budget for 2024, which clocks in at $75 million. That proposed $75 million accounts for an annual growth of 5.2%. Following Monday's session, the next step will be a follow-up meeting and a read-through of the budget in two weeks on October 2nd. Those additional two weeks are added in case the council or the city's constituents wish to raise questions or propose amendments. Beyond budgetary discussions, the council also addressed complaints of an incident that took place last weekend during the Hispanic Heritage Festival. Goshen resident Dallas Barkman spoke to the council claiming that more security should have been present during the event. District 2 Councilmember Doug Nisley agreed with the statement, remarking, quote, I don't think there was respect for enough for the partygoers, unquote. While the festival itself was not a city event, the city did allow event planners to use several streets in the downtown area. And shifting now to important information for parents out there, Goshen Community Schools is now placing a large focus on addressing attendance issues within the school corporation. Community school leaders will be putting pressure on both students and their parents to make sure that these issues are handled and even setting aside funds to incentivize good attendance. According to the school corporation, around 38% of high schoolers have already missed two or more days of school through 21 in-class days, equivalent to about 10% of class time. Although leaders are confident that the new incentives will improve attendance, a total of 53 students have already missed 10 or more days, classifying them as habitually truant. Punishments for truancy can range anywhere from suspensions to expulsions and even suspended driver's license. That's going to do it for this Goshen-exclusive episode of the Goshen News Weekend Wrap-Up. All stories presented in this week's show, as always, were originally reported by the Goshen News, and we thank them again for their partnership. We hope you continue to make this show a part of your weekly routine as we release new episodes each Saturday. Thanks for watching the Weekend Wrap-Up. Until next time, I'm Dante Stanton.